Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving an interesting exponential equation with Euler's number. We have e to the power 1 over x equals negative e, and we're going to be solving for x values. Now before we start solving the problem, it would make sense if you looked at the graph of these two functions. One of them, as you know, is a horizontal line, y equals negative e, and the other graph is y equals e to the power 1 over x, which is kind of like an exponential function, but the exponent is the reciprocal function. So it kind of acts weird because as x approaches infinity, so on and so forth, you know, different things happen. And you can kind of see the end behavior, hopefully, on this graph. And notice that there are no intersection points. What does that mean? It means there are no real solutions. So let's see how we can solve this problem for any solutions, including the complex ones. So we have e to the power 1 over x equals negative e. Now, if we had e to the power 1 over x equals z, e, obviously this equation would be fairly easy to solve. You could directly say, hey, this is equal to 1, and then x equals 1 is a solution. But again, considering the complex solutions, you would have to look at more stuff. So to be able to solve this problem, we have to complexify the right-hand side, which means we're going to write this as a complex number. Now, negative e on the complex plane or the argon diagram can actually be written as negative e plus 0i. So since e is positive, negative e is negative. It's just going to be here, something like that, right? Negative e. And the angle that it makes in this case, since it's um, actually, that's not right. Sorry. That would be a negative EI. Yes, negative E would actually be on the negative real axis. So this is real, this is imaginary. So negative E would be somewhere here. I'm like three pi over two, that doesn't make sense. And the angle that it makes, or the argument, or the theta is gonna be in this case, pi. Of course, that's just one of the values. There are infinitely many, way, many ways you can write this angle, right? Because you can add multiples of two pi. So. That's our number, and obviously its argument, r, in this case, would be e, because it's the absolute value of negative e, which is e. Great, so we can write any number as z, to, z equals r e to the i theta. In this case, we can write the negative e as e times e to the power i theta. Theta would be pi, right? But that's just the principal value. If you consider all the possibilities, then you need to add multiples of 2 pi to this, and you could write it in two different ways, 2 n pi or 2 pi n. This is actually a little more common. So we can kind of write uh, or add multiples of 2 pi. In other words, this exponential function has a period of 2 pi n i. Okay? Cool. Now, this is our number. It's equal to e to the power 1 over x, so let's go ahead and set it equal to that. And notice that this is e to the first power, so I can kind of add the exponents, and 1 plus i times pi plus 2 pi n. Awesome. Now we can go ahead and do the natural log on both sides, and when we do, we're basically going to be getting 1 over x equals 1 plus i multiplied by pi plus 2 pi n. And we're going to be solving for x. But let's go ahead and factor this a little bit. Here we can actually take out a pi. And when we do, we're going to get 1 plus 2n. So you can kind of write it as 1 plus 2n plus 1 times pi i. Okay, great. So now we do need to use the reciprocal function because 1 over x is uh, we, what we have. But we're looking for the reciprocal of that which means the reciprocal of the reciprocal is the function itself or the expression itself. So x is going to be 1 over 1 plus 2n plus 1 pi i. Obviously, you could leave it at this point, but the problem is you need to get rid of the i at the bottom. So we're going to multiply by the conjugate. So notice that this is in standard form, kind of like a plus b i, right? So you need to multiply by a minus b i. So it's going to be 1 minus the quantity 2n plus 1 times pi i, and the same thing at the bottom. So essentially we're multiplying by one, but not changing the denominator and the numerator so that x becomes, the numerator is one times that, so it's the same thing. 
and of course I forgot to say but n is an integer right positive or negative and now from product of a plus bi and a minus bi we're supposed to get the sum of two squares a squared plus b squared right their product so this is going to give us 1 plus 2n plus 1 squared pi squared you're not writing the i because there's no i in the product make sense great so we're going to look at this general solution this is the general solution n is an integer but let's also go ahead and look at some particular values because I'm going to give you approximate values for this one. So let's go ahead and replace n with 0. From here we get x equals 1 minus pi i over 1 plus pi squared. And obviously now we can easily split it up into the real part plus the imaginary part. And the imaginary part is going to be negative pi over 1 plus pi squared. And that will be multiply by i so that this is the real part and this is the imaginary part of course with the minus sign now how can we appro uh, approximate this value x is approximately based on this principal value or n equals zero it's going to be approximately 0 0.0912 minus 0 0.289 i Okay, so that's what it looks like. And if you plug it in, you can use Desmos or Wolfram Alpha. I, mean, I don't think you can use Desmos. I don't think Desmos does complex numbers. Sorry about that. But anyways, kind of like a shortcoming of Desmos, isn't it? Its graphs are fine. But anyways, so this is basically it. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.